Alright guys, before the video starts, I'd like to say a huge thank you to Peter J.A. And also, please go subscribe to him. I'm sure he would really appreciate that, and I would really appreciate that. Hey guys, it's Isaac, and welcome back to another video. So today, I'm going to be doing a documentary on the fascinating lives of harvester ants. A lot of ant species are commonly called harvester ants. The most popular ones being Pogonomermex, Messer, Fedoli, and Veromesser. What makes harvester ants so different from every other ant species is their liking for seeds. You can see in this clip here by Peter J.A. that these harvester ants are collecting some seeds that he gave them. They take these seeds and put them in the nest in little sections called granaries. This is where the workers can easily grab the seeds and feed them to the larvae. Sometimes, when the larvae are given the seeds, they either eat it themselves, or they share some with the workers through a process called trophallaxis. In a desert, there's normally a few plants nearby. The harvester ants will climb up the plants, pry the seeds off, and take them to the granaries. A large issue that harvester ants are facing is the invasion of Argentine ants. Harvester ants primarily live in the desert, but since people keep bringing homes and water supply in, this is a perfect opportunity for Argentine ants to invade the harvester ants. Argentine ants are much smaller than harvester ants, but because of the sheer numbers that they have, they overwhelm harvester ants, ultimately killing them in the end. Let's take another look at this clip where these scientists put a harvester ant in a jar full of Argentine ants. Another problem is that people think harvester ants are fire ants. This is a huge problem because people normally kill a fire ant when they see one, and a lot of the time there are a lot of harvester ants around, so people end up killing a lot of harvester ants, which are extremely beneficial to the environment. Some people may wonder how harvester ants are so good for the environment. Well, since they're desert ants, they tend to dig a lot deeper to find water. And digging much deeper aerates the soil around them and brings old soil to the top, which also helps oxygenate the soil, making it easier for more plants to grow. Along with making the soil more fertile, if it rains before they eat the seeds, the seeds may germinate, sprouting more plants. Harvester ants don't just eat seeds, they'll try to eat anything that walks by their nest. You can see in this video here by Peter J.A. He gave his harvester ants a centipede, and look at them take it down. It's crazy how many they send out to go kill it. Harvester ants are primarily diurnal, but because sometimes it gets really hot in the desert, they choose to be nocturnal because it's much cooler at night. Another interesting thing about harvester ants is some of them have been known to be polymorphic, meaning they have huge majors with huge heads packed with muscle. These have been known to chop up insects or help chop up seeds to be given to the larva. The most common polymorphic harvester ants have been known to be Messer, Veromesser pergandi, and Fedoli. The most aggressive and best fighting harvester ant that I've ever seen is Navamesser cockerelli. These ants are fast, agile, large, and have an extremely strong bite. These ants really just don't care who they're up against. You can see in this clip, these two ants are going up against a mealworm that's twice their size. They just continually bite the mealworm until it either gets cut open and eventually dies from that, or they keep biting it until it becomes tired and is very vulnerable. But a lot of harvester ants choose to scavenge or eat smaller prey that's much easier to take down. The best example I have for this is my Pogonomermex californicus bicolor. They really lack the hunting skills to take down larger prey, so instead I'll feed them some smaller prey or some pre-killed insects. This is my californicus colony. Their flaw in hunting skills is that they'll run up to something that might be still alive, then, but once it flinches, they kind of just back off. 
But in this clip here, these Novomesser Coccarellis take the cricket from all, all sides and they just continuously pull until it dies. And that's how their hunting strategy goes. They're just overall really good hunters. Another extremely interesting thing I noticed about harvester ants is their nest locations. Look at how this nest is formed. This is a Pogonomum extragosis colony I saw when I was hiking. It is covered in rocks and that probably gives them a lot of safety and protection from predators and probably humans as well. And look at this nest design. I see this a lot in the wild with a lot of different ant species. It's kind of like an overhang of dirt while the nest goes kind of under that overhang and just downwards into the dirt. I think this has something to do with heat waves that could occur or maybe a flash flood. But all I know is it's got to protect them from some sort of weather event. Even in this clip here by Peter J.A., see this nest that the Pogonomum exvergosis are nesting in? The dirt kind of goes over in the nest entrance. It's an extremely interesting adaptation. Sometimes replacing this dirt overhang is a very sturdy object, such as a rock, which is most commonly used in the wild as a sturdy nesting site. Another fascinating thing about Pogonomromex is the basket of hairs under their jaws. This helps them carry sangrains and seeds wherever they need to take them. Whenever there's an extreme drought in the desert, harvester ants tend to dig really, really deep, up to five or more meters down, just to find water. This is actually really sad because as global warming and climate change continue to get worse, there's a lot less rain in deserts. This year in the southwestern United States, the monsoon season was delayed by almost two months, and I went out to a lake and I found this Veramuster pergandi colony, but none of them were foraging around. So I grabbed a flashlight and I just angled myself to where I could see inside of the nest. And I saw a worker just go past like every five minutes or so. So I poured some water around the nest and they all started pouring out of the nest just for a drink of water. Something a lot of people like about keeping harvester ants is that they're very easy to see in setups because of their bold body shape and color. A lot of harvester ants tend to be thicker in size. I think this has something to do with the water supply in deserts. And almost all Pogonomormex species have some sort of reddish color to them. Pogonomormex and some other harvester ant species also have some defensive and offensive traits. For example, all Pogonomormex species sting, and let me just tell you, it does not feel good. I've been stung by one of them once. It was probably the worst sensation I've ever felt. And Novomesser coccarelli doesn't spray formic acid. It doesn't have a stinger, but it has an extremely strong bite. And it's pretty surprising because their jaws aren't really that big at all. Their body has a lot of muscle, which makes their bite a lot stronger than a body with less muscle could be. And Messer, Fedoli, and Vera Messer Pergandi don't have stingers, they don't spray formic acid, and they don't have very strong bites. But they make up for all of this in majors. So that's harvester ants. Let me know what you think of them in the comments. And let me know if you want me to do another documentary on a different ant species. And if you don't mind, Please go subscribe to Peter J.A. for allowing me to use a lot of his videos. It really helped in the production of this video. So, a huge thanks to him. Go subscribe to him. Alright guys, that's the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed, learned something, and we're actually getting pretty close to a thousand subscribers. So, if you could do me a favor and hit that subscribe button and leave a like on this video, that would really do a lot. And Thank you so much for all the fan support. It really means a lot to me. Luxter's Ants, out.